happen. So that means this is the start of a reading vlog. Okay. I'm nervous about this vlog. I'm nervous about this vlog and I will tell you why. I am going to be doing a forbidden and dark romance vlog. Okay. Forbidden and dark. Um, these are going to get very dark. This is going to be new for me. I normally, I love dark romance, love dark romance, but I'm going to try to read books that are really going to push the realm for me. And they could have big triggers that might bother me. I don't know. I'm going to try to stay away from ones that I feel like I really could not stomach through. Um, obviously I don't want to do that to myself and I want to like proceed with caution when reading these. Let me backtrack. So I was originally going to do this by myself and then Sam from Sam reads a little, she was like, I was going to do a dark romance vlog anyway. So like, let's do it together. And we decided that one of the books we're going to read, we're going to both read the same one. And that is that sick love by Jesse Hall. So this is Jesse Hall's newest book that she just released. It just came out on March 3rd. And when you're seeing this, it's like, it's already out right now. Um, so this book is a cult. Okay. I don't know specifics to it. I am literally going to go in completely blind, but she says it's like the darkest thing that she's ever written. All of her arc reviewers and like normally I'm hesitant on arc reviewers because especially if it's an author that they are constantly like fancying, sometimes it's difficult to believe like if they really loved it or if it's just because they want to stay on the street team. So, but all of them are saying that it's like, a mind F basically. And I'm kind of in the mood for that. So, and which is so weird because normally I find myself like during the fall wanting to read more like contemporary romances. And then, you know, in the spring is when I go into more like dark romance, which is not normally like normally I'm the opposite. You would think you'd want to read like more dark romance during like during the fall. But this past year I've been the total opposite. So now I'm wanting like all the dark things and all the forbidden things. So that's what we're going to do with this vlog. My plan is to read, sorry, it's like really hot. I'm like turning the air on and turning it off. Um, my plan is to read that sick love first. I'm going to read that first. Cause it comes out. Wait, no, 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 no. First book I'm going to read is Sabotage by Chantel Tessier. I'll put a picture of that up here. Um, I'm actually getting ready to start that. So this book, I've heard a lot of things from McKay about like just saying basically like, it's just like so much smut and spicy and like forbiddenness. So I'm excited for that. It's angsty. It's dark. It's um, like toxic couple. I love that. Okay. I love that. So I'm really excited about that. And then after that book, I'll go into that sick love. After I finish that sick love, I am contemplating reading take me with you contemplating I honestly I don't know I don't know I need to go and look through all of the triggers in that book before I try I know one specifically is um like a forced abortion I don't know if I can read that I don't know if I can read that um so I'm kind of thinking about like all the other triggers that I know of I think I'm okay with um I might start it and when I get to that part, I'll decide if I can keep going or not. I don't know. I don't know. Normally I don't have a lot of triggers. Like my trigger would probably be that a forced abortion. And then also like, I can't read books where, um, like normally set in a prison. I really struggle with those cause I have like family things with that. So I, I can't, so it just, I'm, I'm particular about certain things, but most things I can handle. I'm just hesitant and I'm nervous and I'm trying to be cautious and like guard my heart and like guard, you know, just myself in general. So we'll see, but that's my plan for all of the dark and forbidden romances. If I can't finish that one and if I have time, I might pick up another one, but I'm not entirely sure, but I'm really excited for this because I'm hoping to like stretch myself and give you guys a good vlog from this. We'll see. We'll see. Sam's going to be doing it. I'll have all her stuff linked below so you can check out her um, video and her updates as she starts to read her books. I don't know the other books that she's reading. I know that she's reading That Sick Love. That's the one that we're buddy reading together for the vlog. So I do know she's reading that one. So make sure you check back and watch hers to hear all of her thoughts for that. Um, I'm getting ready to go in Academy because I have to get new stuff for my kids for baseball because they're growing and whoa. That was a drastic change. Um, they are growing out of all their baseball stuff. So I'm having to go and like 
get new helmet sizes and like they need new water cups and all these random things. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to try to sit down and finish my current book that I'm reading and then I'm going to start sabotage. So I will check in, um, buckle up guys. It's going to be interesting. Okay, I realize I haven't checked in since I started Sabotage by Chantal Tessier. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this book because, okay, first off is Step Sibling. Step Sibling Romance. I don't, I wouldn't even call it a romance. This book is just straight smut. And I'm 30% in and I might actually hate it. I might actually hate it. They hate each other and they're trying to like use each other basically. Um, basically they only screw with each other. She has a boyfriend. He screws around with other girls, but like, that's all that they want out of each other. And I don't like that. And I don't like it. So I think I'm going to DNF because at this point I'm like, I am getting zero out of this book. Nothing. Not a, I don't even know why I'm reading it. Kind of a shame. Then again, at the same time, like, you just never know. And maybe because I'm just not really in the mood for a book that's all spice. Like I want plot. And I think lately I've, I, I just want that. I want that. And I find it really hard to read books that are so heavy on the spice and less on the plot. And that's been my struggle lately. So I think I'm going to DNF. I realized that it's been a while since I've checked in and I have like zero updates to give you other than the DNF of sabotage. But I just left the gym. And now I am on my way to the beach. I cannot even tell you the last time I went to the beach by myself without kids, stress-free. It's like 85 degrees here today in Florida. So it's like perfect start of spring, summertime beach weather. And I'm gonna be going all the time. So my plan while I'm here is to start That Sick Love by Jesse Hall. Today is actually the third, which is release day. My plan is to get a big majority of that book read today and then I'll check back in. So as of right now, I have zero updates because I don't even know what it's about other than a cult and it's super, super dark. And also I think that Sam is starting it today as well. So hopefully her and I will um, update each other as we go with that, but I will keep you guys posted. Bye. Also, yes, I look like a busted can of biscuits. Um, if you're new here on my channel, this is what my vlogs consist of because this is real life people and I don't, I don't have it all together. I don't have it all together. Okay, I feel like I have to update because I cannot stop reading this book. Um, so I'm at the beach. I am on chapter seven of That Sick Love, following Bri and Arrow. And Arrow is Bri's stalker. From the beginning, you know that he's her stalker. She knows that she's being stalked, but she's like somewhat intrigued by the fact of having a stalker. She just doesn't know anything about him or like what to do about it. Um, Bri is basically being like, what do you call it? She's being like inducted into the church in some type of way and basically this is her as a woman um like making progress in like authority and leadership in the church and that's not something that men approve of or think is okay it's literally just her and two other guys and like all of their families have like some type of connection well um we're finding out that like she's getting ready to like she was getting ready to go through this whole baptism thing and arrow was stalking her i'm calling it a baptism because i think that's what it's called like where they like it's okay so it's not like your typical baptism where you go underwater and you're lifted and raised to life again it, it's like a baptism where basically you're being drowned until like the devil comes out of you and that's what happens to her and like to two of the other guys well on her turn she's just held underwater and is never let out and like they never lift her up above the water to breathe and it's because like there's this big explosion in the church and we're finding out that her father paid the pastor like they're all tag teaming together along with the two other boys who are supposed to be indicted to that they basically want her dead 
because women have no place in leadership in the church. They have no place in politics. They have no place in like any type of authority. So her stalker, Arrow, who also has this other mission, and I'm still trying to figure out what that is. I, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, he's fascinated by her. He's dark and disturbed. He's just recently um, been let out of prison, but nobody knows he's out or like knows who he is. So he's kind of like combating on her behalf, but also is supposed to want her dead at the same time. So I don't know. It's very, it's a very strange setup, but I'm like super, super intrigued. Um, yeah, it's really good so far. And it's just like, you can definitely tell she's a part of this cult, a part of like something that um, isn't the right way things should be done. And like, she doesn't have a strong like family background either. So it's just, it's just a hot mess, but it's good. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Um, this is like literally the worst angle ever, but I don't want to give you my boob shot. I just wanted to check in before I forgot how good all of this was and all of the little details because I can't stop reading. So I know Sam is reading it too and we're kind of like reading at the same pace as well. So yeah, that's where I'm at. But um, I have like an hour and a half until my parking time is up. So I'm going to try to finish reading and then I'll check in later. Bye. Two. So you got a homeboy, one of the guys who his dad is like the preacher or the pastor. And like, I'm thinking, if I'm understanding it correctly, but like secretly him and his dad have a plan of how they're trying to kill her. And now Saint, who is the son, he is like trying to woo her and like ask her to go to a ball and is like touching her and like going out of his way to be like affectionate with her. Well, Arrow, her psychopath stalker, just freaking threw a brick at the car and shattered the glass when he kissed her hand. If this does not touch her and I'll kill you, I don't know what is. And I am loving him. <laughs> loving him. This man just said, be a good girl and now suck on my tongue. Excuse me, sir. Can we have more of that? Hello, everyone. Um, it's been a while since I've checked in. Oh, I hate when this happens. My necklace gets all rotated. Um, okay, so I finished That Sick Love, and I needed a little bit of time to process it. I finished it yesterday. This book was not what I was expecting in, like, a good way, um, but also just, like, in a that just blew my mind kind of way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain to you my first impression of, I, th I think this book was like a mix between Amo Jones and Sam Mariano. It was like the dark and twistedness of Amo's writing, but like the mind F that comes with Sam Mariano's. Like similar to Even If It Hurts and also similar to like Sicko the Antichrist, if you've read that by Amo Jones. It was just wild, wild. And so here are my thoughts. Um, I'm thinking when I left off the last time I was talking about how our heroine Brienne, she was a part of a cult and it's kind of, it's almost like it's a cult, but she doesn't realize it's a cult. So there's all this corruption within the church and she's like one of the only women who are moving up in like position and power and like the men that run the church don't like that obviously. So there's this type of segregation between like the women and the men and it's messed up. I already didn't like that part about it. I'm like, this girl better get in and show them what's up first off. So she doesn't realize that because she's just grew up in this lifestyle. And then we have our hero arrow who he is the stalker. He has been stalking her and there's a reason behind their stalking. And I'm going to try to keep this as like spoiler free as I can. Cause I really hope you guys read this. Um, he has a reason to why he's stalking her and there's a mission behind it. But also arrow has a background that, you know, goes back in time with the church and with the leaders of the church, specifically the men, because they are only men. And he wants to bring justice. Like he feels himself, first off, he feels himself really drawn to Brienne and he, there's this unexplainable connection that he has with her, this, um, like gravitational pool almost like they're meant to be together. And it's very much clear that they are. And a lot of that connection develops over time. But, um, yeah, so he is trying to show her who she truly is. And in the meantime, expose the corruption of this cult behind the church. And, like, there's... You're okay. Okay, you're okay. 
There's a lot of corruptions. So basically all of these men in the background who are running the church, the deacon, the ones who are ahead of the school, the pastor or preacher or whatever you want to call him. Um, and then that guy Saint who she also like has been kind of fooling around with a little bit and who he kind of has disguised himself as this perfect person and trying to like win her over basically. And she's falling for it. They all have been a part of this like scheme all behind her back basically. And they are doing things that are obviously not like worthy to God and not things that you know you would do in a position of leadership in a church and there's just a lot of corruption and he's trying to expose that and he's trying to show that everything is not what it seems and these people like but it's dark but it is dark and like he basically calls himself her god he's like you're gonna worship me i am your god now da, da, da. like he leaves her little notes from scripture that he tears out of the bible and like puts to the side with like his signature and stuff on i don't he is crazy and he is messed up but like it worked at the same time. And she started to see all of these things and realize all of the corruption and the things that were happening that were like right in front of her, but she was just so blinded by. And he dirties her up, dirties her up. Like there is that one point where he says to her to suck on his tongue. And I was like, sir. Okay. He spits in her mouth like that kind of filthiness and it just freaking worked. Now, let me tell you this. So here is my only problem with this. And like we saw, we saw revelation come at the end and like the, the ending was freaking wild, like amazing. I think it was like the perfect ending for it, but around like 40, between 40 and 60%, there was like a little bit of a lull to me where it was just straight smut, good smut, but like kind of unnecessary. And at the same time, I think that was like maybe her, Jesse Hall's way of building this like trust between Arrow and Brienne because I think that they really need, well, she really needed to trust Arrow and she needed to trust his intentions and learn more about him before she started like pulling out her own demons and being her own little devil herself because she really did turn into that. Oh, this is like this glare. So there was a lot of smut in that part. And I think that I take a star off for that because I felt myself kind of like wanting to skim and getting a little bored in between then. But other than that, like I'm giving it four stars. This book was dark and twisted and I, he's a filthy son of a gun. Filthy son of a gun. Like <clears throat> I, I don't even know how to best describe it. You just have to read it to find out for yourself. But I enjoyed this experience so much. Just like from the beginning, I was hooked. I could not put it down. And then I, I met that little like lull in between. And then towards the end, I was just like, holy freaking crap. And you see this girl who has grown up in the church, who is a yes woman, who is constantly told that she has to please men and she has to do what they say and say yes. And just like bat your eyes and do what you're told. Basically, like there's no spot for a woman or there's no spot for a woman in authority in the church and yada, yada, yada. It's just messed up. So she's just always been taught and known to do that. And then arrow just like helps transform her into who she really is. And like, she's confident in herself. She's just like this badass woman who knows who she is. She fights for who she loves. She fights for arrow. She starts to like kill people. It's just crazy. And her transformation from beginning to end was amazing. It was like one of my favorite parts about it. So I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I, I would recommend it 1000%. Um, I'm, I think like the darkness of it, I wasn't expecting it to be on this side of it as opposed to the other. Like I really had to work my brain to figure out what was going on behind this cult and I don't know. It was super fun. I had a really good time reading it. You should definitely check it out. Today is Sunday. We are having a family day and just kind of like laying low and chilling. I'm hoping within the next Mommy. day. What baby? I'm in the water. Okay. We are doing a whole lot of nothing today. It's Sunday and to be honest, I'm not really feeling great. I feel like I might be coming down with something. So we're just going to lay low. Max is going fishing and the kids and I are just going to chill before they go back to school tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping to try to start Take Me With You probably within the next day or two. So it might be a little bit before I check in, but yeah, I'm a little nervous about that one. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I can, I mean, I, I we'll see. We'll see. I'm a little nervous.
<laughs> Whatever. Um, okay. I can't even take myself seriously. Hold on. I'm to move this back a little bit. You know what? Whatever. Okay, so I started Take Me With You last night. I feel fine with it. I feel fine with it. I will say that. I think, okay, so initially, I'm only like 12% in. Initially, my first thought was he seems a lot normal than I expected. So I expected this guy, the serial killer, to be like completely like outside of normalcy. Like so far gone that he doesn't even feel like an actual person with any type of feelings. And you can see that he has feelings. Like he obviously has gone through something in his life that has made him the way that he is now. I obviously don't know that right now, but he keeps having this inner dialogue with himself, basically saying like, um, don't fall for it. Like they're just playing you. They, they want you to think that they, they're listening to you, but really they're not really, they hate you and da da da. Like he's his own worst enemy. So something has obviously happened in his life that has made him the way that he is. So in the beginning we see him and I'm going to try to keep this like spoiler free because I feel like this is going to be like a pit full of spoilers. And, um, so in the beginning we see basically him like strategizing how he's going to kind of groom, like groom this woman that he sees in the grocery store. But this is something that he does all the time. Like he plans a night and he breaks into these couples homes and ties the husband up. Like we see first off, he ties the husband up and then he rapes the wife. And, but like psychologically he's genius, genius. Like does it, does this method where he like slams the door to make it seem like someone else is coming in and we'll have this conversation with him. Like he's like, Oh no, I'm not ready yet. No, I'm not ready yet. And make it seem like he's, he's got an accomplice so that they're not only looking for him. And like the way that he tracks down his targets, like he spreads them out in a certain way. Like he's genius. So, so that I'm like, holy crap, he, he's smart. He knows what he's doing and he, he's methodical because he's planning everything out, but he has his sights set on Vesper, who is the heroine. And I'm already kind of sad because I know he's going to target her, but she has, she has a brother who is autistic and he's on spectrum and like can't take care of himself. Her mom doesn't take care of him. So she's his sole caregiver. And I'm just thinking like, please don't leave that boy to take care of himself. Please don't do it. But I probably, I, I, I know that's going to happen because I, this book is twisted and he seems like a twisted mofo. So oh, that's going to break my heart. So I'm doing okay with it right now. Not a whole lot's happened other than she just found out, like he just witnessed her boyfriend proposing to her and like they sleep together. He proposes right after and she says yes. And now he's like, oh, I'm not waiting to do my plan. I'm getting ready to go in. And that's where I stopped at. Cause I was like, I need to have like full attention on this scene to go into it. So, um, I'm intrigued now. I, 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 I don't know. I feel like I'm not even at the worst part hardly ever or hardly at all. So, but I'm intrigued by him and the way his mind is working the most. So I'm going to sit down and try to finish this by tonight or maybe tomorrow. If I can, I have to have this vlog up by Monday, but I have other books I have to read too. So yeah, I'll check back in. Yeah, hi. <laughs> um, I just have to say, I, I kind of like this guy and maybe something's wrong with me. I'm like 30% in and I feel like I should hate him by now, but I'm like, I kind of like feel bad for him. Like, I feel like he's just has gone through so much in his life and has just been told that there's always something wrong with him and that he's a problem and he's damaged and he's a burden to other people. Like... I just feel bad for him and I kind of understand him. I don't know. I'm sure there's more coming, but for now I like him. I was not planning on doing a check-in video at the beach. I, I'm just a hot mess right now. Um, okay, so I just finished Take Me With You. And I realize I have not checked in at any other point throughout this book because I have been completely sucked into this story. Never did I think that I could fall for the bad guy to this level, to where I'm literally rooting for his happiness. Hopefully you can hear me over the waves and the wind and stuff, but I 
I did not struggle with this book like I thought I was. And I think it wasn't as dark as I was picturing. I think I was like literally picturing not being able to read anything at all. Um, there is a like attempted abortion that I struggled with a little bit that is kind of triggering to me. But um, other than that, it was just so, it was just more like of a psychological thing. Like you are really questioning your morals. You're questioning what you are okay with in life and like what is accepting to you. And this man truly did not plan to take her. He did not plan to take her. He just planned it to be a one night satisfaction thing and but never really got anything that he was looking for out of it at the end and really felt unfulfilled. Takes her with him and falls for her. And you see him protecting her. Not once did he hurt her. Not once did he do anything that made her feel like her life was threatened. Like she had to be fearful of even living. Um, he, I don't know, he just protected her at all costs. And while still like protecting his heart because he knew that he couldn't let his guard down, I, I, I just have zero words zero words and I don't want to give spoilers to the end but the the end was the best part to me you see selflessness you see someone wanting to be protective but like really just putting someone he actually loves first when he knows it's not the right thing to do and well it doesn't benefit him in any way I'm gonna read this last part because I'm I'm just like I I've been crying I've been crying I'm on the beach crying over this rapist and abductor and I just want him to find happiness because he's hurting and broken and whatever. It says the same hands that he has used to hurt me, he uses to hold me up as I weep with my entire body. Shh, he whispers, stroking my head, no one loves you like I do. I didn't know it could be a thing, but he might be my new favorite anti-hero might be my new favorite anti-hero. I was rooting for this guy from the beginning. I was messaging McKay saying, I want him to be happy because this man is at rock bottom, has never had anybody love him or take care of him or treasure him or appreciate him. None of the things, but he is doing all of that for Vesper, our heroine. And he has made her feel nothing but loved and taken care of. Other than like in the beginning, he really has to break her down so that she depends on him on this new level. But I, I love this book. I, I have, I have no words. I have no words. Incredible. The most beautiful writing too. And I think that if you're hesitant to read this, you should try it. You should try it. Um, look up the trigger warnings because it's different for everybody. I thought it was going to be a heck of a lot darker. Um, the psychological and the emotional aspect of it outweighed the darkness to me tenfold. There is a trigger warning for animal abuse in here too. So just FYI for that, if that is triggering to you. Um, I, I am speechless. I am speechless. Five stars, six stars. This is a top read of the year. I already know it. Probably a new favorite book ever. Amazing. Amazing. I still need to sit on my thoughts and I might have more to say, but for now, uh, freaking masterpiece. Masterpiece. Hello. Um, I realized that I didn't even close out this vlog after I finished the books, but um, I kind of want to just like signal out with the fact that I feel like this was a really successful vlog. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the books I read other than DNFing Sabotage, which truthfully, I wasn't really expecting to do that. I don't know. I think it was just like part of the mood I'm in. And I had a lot of people that um, actually messaged me asking how I liked it when they saw that I was even reading it. So hopefully I didn't hurt too many people's feelings because I know this is a favorite and I know this author is a favorite. I'm just not sure if she's quite for me. I did like the way she wrote like a toxic relationship but it just was purely smut. And I am, I feel like I'm getting to that point in reading where I just have to have plot. I want spice, but I have to have plot or I don't, I don't like it. And I'm not mad about that. So yeah, anyway, so that one didn't work for me, but I found a new all time favorite, another dark romance I like. So I'm super happy with this. I feel like it was very successful. Um, make sure you check out Sam's video. I will have all of her stuff linked below, her video, her channel, subscribe to her. Um, let her know that you found her here and just watch all of her stuff. I can't wait to see what she thought about her books that she read. I know she read Sicko by Alma Jones. So I'm interested to see that one. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tagging along. Um, and I guess I will see you next time. Bye.